Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. So I'm going to uh, um, to claim a poem by Oscar Wilde, another one. Um, this is composed in the same uh, cemetery as he composed his one about uh, the grave of uh, Keats. And this is a uh, Cimiterio a Catolico in Rome, as in the non-Catholic cemetery, where bo they're both laid to rest, about two minutes walk from each other. And in the, in the walls of Rome, Shelley's almost literally in the walls of Rome, the southern walls, because there have been a number of different walls they've built over the centuries. Um, so I shall, uh, I shall declaim it for you and then uh, briefly discuss it afterwards. The Grave of Shelley by Oscar Wilde. Like burnt out torches by a sick man's bed. Gaunt cypress trees stand round the sun-bleached stone. Here doth the little night owl make her throne, and the slight lizard show his jewelled head. And where chalice poppies flame to red, in the still chamber of yon pyramid, surely some old world sphinx lurks darkly hid, grim warder of this pleasance of the dead. Ah, sweet uh, indeed to rest within the tomb of earth, great mother of eternal sleep, but sweeter far for thee, a restless tomb in the blue cavern of an echoing deep, or where the tall ships founder in the gloom against the rocks of some wave shattered steep. Rome. So um, that uh, was uh, his poem, and, um, well, it's in two stanzas. Uh, I tried to pause just momentarily as I shifted from the first um, to the second. Um, so he certainly visited um, the, the uh, Cimiterio al Catolico. I'm not sure if he actually wrote the poem there and, on, on, and then on the spot, possibly. So um, i just go go through it briefly. So I don't want to tell you too much about Shelley's biography but he was born 1792 and he died um, 7, 1822 shortly before his 30th birthday when the boat he was traveling on capsized off the coast of Italy uh, near Livorno and he and his two companions drowned. His body was washed ashore sometime afterwards and his uh, body was cremated on the beach at Viareggio and he'd have been to Viareggio but I don't recall um, seeing any memorial but I, I, I should look better next time, look harder. Um, but for some reason, his heart wouldn't burn because you must have to get up to a ferocious temperature there. I've been told by someone who worked at a crematorium, it has to be hundreds of degrees Celsius before you could even put the cadaver in. And this is in the open, his body would have been wet. And so they recovered the heart and that was kept by his son for a very long time and buried decades later in that same cemetery, presumably to make him some, to, to put him close to Keats. Um, and how did it not rot the heart? I'm not sure. Um, were they really sure it was the heart rather than some other organ like the liver? It doesn't particularly matter. But a bit of his mortal remains, his flesh rotted away into Italian loam. And that's how I can connect to him going there. But I've touched something that he's touched at Upper School at Eton where he carved his name into the oaken panel. And I've I traced my finger through it several times. So I had contact with him. Um, and that, that gave me deep gratification, but, uh, going over this poem, I've, I've admired him most immensely since I was, um, eight years old. So mad Shelley, Shelley, the atheist, as he was known, um, an outcast at school for, um, his views, which were really not, um, the, not, not popular at the time, deeply unfashionable, believing in, uh, equality and anti-racism um, in um, the abolition of monarchy and hereditary titles in democracy and vegetarianism, um, the abolition of slavery and so forth. Um, so go over this poem. Wilde um, was apolitical. It didn't seem to take a view on whether Ireland, whether we should be part of the United Kingdom or not. But uh, Shirley was fascinated by politics. He was one of the un 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 unacknowledged legislators of the world, as he said. That's what he called poets. And indeed, um, Using that quotation, uh, the late, great Christopher Hitchens composed the most formidable tome, uh, uh, tome on, on, on writers in the public sphere. So back to the poem about Shelley, like burnt out torches uh, by a sick man's bed. Well, really, they didn't have torches to, to, to light things in those days. Um, this is um, 
1898 or so when, when Wilde's composing uh, this piece. Gaunt cypress trees stand round the sun-bleached stone. So cypress trees just as by, by, by um, Keats's uh, last resting place. So Gaunt is looking unhealthily thin. Um, there are certainly trees, I don't remember the cypress trees when I was there. And okay, the, the, the um, sun would be almost burnt white by the blazing uh, cynosure of all eyes, uh, because it can be so refulgent in Italy. Here doth the little night owl make her throne, throne. doth meaning does, as a past tense, they often say here does, whatever, whatever. Does he really know owls go there? Possibly. Is he just imagining that? Did he go there at night? I think an unlikely. And the slight lizard show his jeweled head. Okay, he may well have seen a lizard there. Even if he didn't, I think the poetic license is entirely acceptable. But uh, he doesn't say that much about Shelley, but perhaps there's no need to say it. Needs no introduction if you're the sort of person who's troubled to um, bother reading a poem about them as grave rather than one of his uh, uh, better received works, you know, Shelley's own poetry. Um, so what's he telling us by, by, by citing these living things when he's at the grave, that life continues, that somehow this springs out of um, uh, Shelley's oeuvre or from his body, because they could have been nourished on... on the grass which grew out of his body grew out of his body. Life springs from death. That's the um, uh, conciliation, or what would I say, consolation that I draw from it. And where chaliced poppies flame to red. Now, this chalice I'm not sure about. I mean, chalice as in a jewel encrusted cup, like poison chalice, or does it mean like mm, when the skin is like almost torn? And they could be well poppies, they could be going turning red or right. This is before Flanders Fields and all that, John McRae, First World War. So it's not an allusion to that. In the still chamber of yon pyramid. And indeed, there is a pyramid hard by, not a stone's throw from, from, the, from the grave. You can't quite see it from that angle, but you can see it from Keats's grave. Um, and I'm not sure why the Romans bothered building a pyramid there. It's not an ancient Egyptian one. No, they didn't uh, translate that from Egypt. Um so still chamber, well, yes, no doubt it is silent if it's a tomb. Surely some old world sphinx lurks darkly hid. You know what sphinxes are, those those curious creatures mentioned in um, Oedipus, um, King of Thebes, or obviously in, in Egyptian mythology, you've probably seen the huge, well, no, the huge sphinx near Giza in Egypt. This curious creature with the body of a lion and a face of a man as it wings, all the rest of it. Grim ward of this pleasance of the dead. So... The Sphinx being the gatekeeper was meant to scare people off the Valley of the Kings, like some gigantic gargoyle. So, it's, it's, so they're having fun there in the underworld, are they? I remember these um, these dead people because Hades. Well, you could have um, uh, have quite a good time. Get up to revelry there. Ah, sweet indeed to rest within the womb of Earth, great mother of eternal sleep. So, if you're if you're buried underground, you're in the womb of Earth. Okay, because that's earth like mother earth and things come out of there plants grow out of there and that nourishes all the rest of us and yes all right well nature causes us to sleep okay um but sweeter far for thee a restless tomb because um in the blue cavern of the echoing deep because of course Shelley drowned although he's not actually underwater he didn't quite get that but maybe they scattered his ashes on the on the sea i'm not certain about that one so because is it because he's, he's a restless soul that's apposite in his case uh, is that was that um wild's message that's my exegesis of it anyway um the blue cavern so cavern like a like a cave because it does go down low there really are caverns in the sea of the echoing deep um you don't can't really hear very much underwater, but ne nevertheless, um, uh, I know you hear the tides and the winds above it, or where the tall ships founder in the gloom, as in they sink and crash or they hit rocks in the darkness. I'm not sure why he would like that, but that's what happened to him, his boat, and it was a boat, not a ship, which tipped over against the, so, the rocks of some wave-shattered steep. Um, well, yes, they could um, hit the rocks, uh, there, I think it gets weaker. It's not his best crafted poem. It's, it's missing his characteristic genius, I'm afraid, though I did find it aesthetically pleasing. So please, oh yeah, book online lessons with me in history, politics, religious studies, French law, and so on. I translate from French, Spanish, Italian, Romanian, German, and Russian, particularly legal documents. I'll be your tour guide in London. I help people with theses, essays, and dissertations, personal statements, interview practice, and so forth. Right, so please check out my main channel, George Myland Reflections. Toodle pip.